got uh, draw the orbital overlap diagram for CH2Cl2. Your diagram should include the type of each atomic orbital, SPD, SP squared, etc., and whether the overlap forms a sigma or pi orbital. Please upload your work as a PDF. So, uh, and uh, I've changed, ooh, yeah, I've changed it a little bit here, but you'll get to do it to your uh, version here. And hopefully your answer, well, anyway, hopefully what I'm doing will help. I think it will. So our process will always be to draw the best Lewis structure. And uh, I'm going to go quickly through that part now. So this is going to be 2 H's and 2 chlorines bonded to the central carbon. As I was just making up the exam, by the way, um, one of the questions refers to uh, do atoms have the, uh, or do atoms violate the octet rule? And, uh, and I also write, well, for hydrogen, it's really called the duet rule because hydrogen only ever wants two electrons. Anyway, just be aware of that. Um, and you'll, and again, I'll show you some of those problems so you can practice on them before the third exam. Anyway, this is the best Lewis structure. There are no formal charges in here. Uh, we know a lot about this already. So this central carbon has an sp3 hybridization because there are four electron groups similar to the last example. And now what's, uh, at, what we're going to do for an orbital overlap diagram is we will literally, and I don't use that word lightly, draw the overlap between the orbitals. And here's what that looks like. Here's carbon. We just said that carbon has sp3 hybridization. An sp3 hybridized orbital, so sp3 hybridized orbital, Uh, basically looks like half of a p orbital, so is one big balloon shape. And only one, so I'm going to draw one, two, three, four. And this carbon, these are each sp3. hybridized orbitals. Okay, so I'm not done yet, but that's that's carbon and you need to know what the hybridization is on carbon to draw these. And now I'm going to draw my H's here. Hydrogen has an electron configuration of 1s1. That means its orbital that bonds with carbon is a 1s orbital. So I'm going to draw it as a sphere. Uh, uh, is a sphere. And it's a hydrogen, so I'm going to write H in it. And there's one electron from the 1s1. And there's always one electron, so I'll draw that in a different color from the carbon. And what I love about orbital overlap diagrams, and as I speak about this, I'm thinking, well, the third exam better have you draw an orbital overlap diagram as part of part two. And I'm going to take that note right now. All right, my apologies, but uh, that's a great thing for you to have to do for, uh, all right, so, and it says, 
should include the type of each atomic orbital. So the type would be the 1s for hydrogen and the sp3 for carbon. Now let's do the other hydrogen. And for each hydrogen, it's a 1s orbital. And now let's talk about chlorine. Chlorine has a, well, let's see, it's neon 3s2, 3p5. And that means that the 3p orbital is the orbital that uh, one of, the, so, all right, let's backtrack here. Uh, take our time. Deep breath. In the 3p of chlorine, there are three orbitals and five electrons. So this is the 3p. And really, this all ties back to our electron configurations, the arrows that show which orbitals are fully occupied and which orbitals are half occupied. Um, and I'm going to do this in green now. So what I need to do, if I can find some actual green. Oh, that should be good. So is the 3p orbital is the one that's going to bond for chlorine. So that's what a 3p orbital or any p orbital looks like. A p orbital has two parts to it and it has one electron for the chlorine and one electron for the carbon. And what I love, <laughs> I'll say this again, I guess, uh, about these diagrams, I love so many things about them, is that it really makes the point that when a bond forms, a bond forms due to the overlap of two orbitals, one orbital for the hydrogen here and one orbital for the carbon, one orbital for the chlorine and one orbital for the carbon. And that's, that's really what bonds are. Bonds are the overlap of orbitals. These two electrons get shared by both of the orbitals and that's why we count them in both of the atoms octets. So one more to do here. And I'm not too picky uh, about the shapes of these, meaning how rounded or how not rounded there are, but they should have. But what I am picky about is each of them has to be labeled. And the last thing this says is whether the overlap forms a sigma or pi uh, bond, it should say, bond. And since all of these are single bonds and single bonds are sigma bonds, each of these is going to be a sigma bond. And I don't know if I have another color over here. Nope. Oh, yes, I do. So this is a sigma bond. All of these are. And we know they're sigma bonds, sigma, S-I-G-M-A, because they are single bonds. We also know they're sigma bonds because the electrons are between the two nuclei, and that's what makes a sigma bond. Now, in this CH2, CH2, there will be at least one pi bond, we demonstrated what pi bonds look like in the lecture outline. Pi bonds, uh, if there was a pi bond between the chlorine and the carbon, they would be on the sides here because pi bonds are not between the two nuclei. Well, um, any questions about what I've got down here so far? Because this problem is now solved. Well, if you have questions later, happy to talk about them. We'll 